Okay, in this video, I wanna talk about something that we all learned in year seven and then completely forgot about it. It's called the scientific method and it goes like this. Four steps. Number one, form a hypothesis based on your observations. So that's something that you see that happens, whatever, work out something that might explain it. Secondly, design an experiment to test the hypothesis. Thirdly, carry out the experiment and fourthly, draw a conclusion from it. Now, what often happens is people just go straight from the observation to the conclusion and it costs a lot of time and money. Now, here's an example from our tuning world. Someone's tuning a car on a dyno, they discover that they've got a misfire that happens under load. They think, oh no, I've got an ignition problem. So they start gapping the plugs down, misfire's still there. They go to upgrade the ignition coils, misfire's still there. They go to CDI, misfire's still there. Then eventually they ask for help from someone else who diagnoses it as a trigger problem instead. So once they fix the trigger problem, then we discover that all that upgrading of the ignition system was not actually necessary. And the problem was that it wasn't actually diagnosed in the first place. What our hypothetical tuner did in this situation was he went straight from the initial observation, I've got a misfire, to the conclusion. Now really that's a hypothesis which should have been tested instead of acted on. So how do we test that easily? Well, lots of ways to do it. If you're on a dyno, you've got the car there, you can reduce the dwell time on the ignition system because that should make the problem worse. You can see if the problem replicates at light loads as well because if it's a trigger related problem, it often won't get worse with load. And certainly it would rule out an ignition strength problem if it still happens at very light load. Had that been done, then we could have diagnosed it as a trigger system problem in the first place. Another example of where this happens in our world, we had, it was a situation that I had where it seemed like an ignition problem. That is, it only happened at high load and it only really happened on the racetrack. When the car had been running for about 10 minutes or so and had been heat soaked, often ignition system problems are actually heat related. So we thought it was ignition system problem. Changing ignition coils in the middle of the endurance event big problem. It turned out actually to be a fuel system problem where there's no pre-filter before the fuel pump. The fuel pump was sucking in foam from the from the fuel cell and it was actually blocking up the fuel filter and as a result the engine was getting fuel starvation. Now because it happened so suddenly it seemed like an ignition misfire but when I actually was able to replicate it on the dyno I could see the fuel pressure dropping off before the problem occurred which was my trigger that it was probably a fuel system problem and we could test that. Now that was actually a very difficult problem to diagnose and solve, but I only got there because I followed the scientific method when I was doing it. Now lastly, I don't think I need to say that to our tribe of people, but I've sometimes heard people say that science is bad because it gives us pollution and nuclear weapons and other bad things like that. It's true because science is the best way to do anything, whether it's something good or something destructive. And that's the whole point. Science, it works, bitches.